Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this lesson we're going to study mean, median and mode, the measures of central tendency of a distribution. Okay, and my first example is about the science grades of a class. Let's say that we have so many students and here are all of their grades written out, what they got. And here is the distribution done as a dot plot. So each dot corresponds to one student. One student got a D, okay? So just looking at the distribution here, looking at the plot, we can see that the bulk of the students seem to be getting C, C+, something like that. And these three measures of central tendency should give us information about the center of the distribution, about the bulk of the students, okay? What's average? How did the average student do, so to speak? Okay, now mean is the regular average which is calculated by adding all of the values together and dividing by how many observations there are. In this case, we cannot calculate the mean because you cannot start adding something that's not numbers. These are not numbers, you cannot add them. So mean is not available, we cannot calculate it. Median is the middlemost number once you have organized your data from smallest to greatest. And this data can be organized. This is definitely the least and this is the greatest. It's organized in order. So now we can check what is the middlemost item there, or middlemost value. First I need to count how many values there are. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. There are 19 values. And now half of 19 you need to think of this being divided into two groups. It would be like 10 and 9, right? But let's think of it this way. If you take 9 of them to the one group and 9 of them to the other, that's 18. And then whatever is left in the middle is the middlemost observation. So I count 9 from here and then the 10th observation, 10th value here is the median. C plus. So median is C plus, okay? And that describes the central tendency or the middle of this distribution pretty good. Mode is the item that occurs most often. And if I just I have to look at the list here or look at what is highest here, it is C. So that also describes this distribution well. Both median and mode are doing good, so to speak. Okay, they are helpful. In this example, we have favorite colors of people, and this would be the number of people. So maybe, let's say, 200 people said that black was their favorite color, and 770 people said that blue was their favorite color, and so on. Okay, now, can we calculate the mean, the median, the mode? Can we calculate them, those? It just so happens that even though there are numbers associated, like I said, maybe there was 200 people who said black, maybe there was 777 people that said blue, uh, we cannot calculate anything from this data. Because think about what kind of list of data, what kind of list of values was used to make this plot, to make this bar graph. It wasn't numbers. It was people's responses to the question, what's your favorite color? So the responses would have been just individual words, you know, black, black, blue, 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 orange, blue, 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 pink, you know. That's the list of values that was used to make this bar graph. And if you have a list of words like black, blue, pink, pink, you cannot put them in order to find the median. And you cannot add them and divide anything. You cannot calculate the mean either. The only thing we can find is the mode. What is the most common? What is the value occurring most often? Blue. That's all we can do here. Here, these numbers are shooting percentages, okay, or field goal percentages, if you want to think of them that way, of basketball players. They are, these are just basic percentages like 12%, 13%, just to keep it simple. And now let's find out mean, median and mode. Here is the distribution as a histogram. This kind of bar graph where the bars are touching each other is called a histogram. And here is my bin, so to speak, for 12 to 15 percent, there's three players here, okay? 
and 16 to 19 percent there was one player and so on. We can see from the graph already that the center of this distribution is somewhere here, right? Okay. To calculate the mode might be easiest, just check the list and check what number occurs most often. There's 23, but there's also 25. This date has two modes. Okay, so the mode is 23 and 25, because both of them occur twice as often, okay? Median is the middlemost number. Let's check that now. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 14 players. And so the middlemost number is now not going to be a single number because when I divide this data set in half, I get 7 and 7. So I will look at the 7th and 8th value there and take their average. Here's the 7th and here's the 8th value. If you take basically their midpoint or their average, it is going to be 23. Median is 23. And then the mean now we can calculate the mean. It is the sum of all values divided by the number of all values. Okay? Also sometimes called the average. And I calculated the sum before this video. It was 319 and we have 14 players there. And so 319 divided by 14, you calculate that and you get about 22.8. So that is the mean. Notice it's pre pretty close to median. And both mean and median are describing this distribution well, because both of them are somewhere here. Lastly, here we are not going to calculate anything, but I want to show you this graph. This is a distribution, typical distribution, if you are studying income of people most anywhere. It doesn't even have to be dollars, it could be some other unit, pesos, whatever. And this would be the number of people. So basically there's lots of people who earn low income, even more people who earn some kind of a middle income or whatever. Then it starts tapering down and there's less and less people earning high incomes and then there is a trickle of people earning very high incomes, okay? And when you calculate mean, median and mode... Now mode not, is not really necessarily useful here because people's incomes might vary. There might be somebody earning, let's say, 36,200 and then somebody else earning 36,220. They're close numbers, but as, as far as mode goes, they're still not the same number. So, we wouldn't use mode in this kind of situation, usually. But mean and median are possible to calculate. And what happens in this kind of a shape is that the median might be somewhere here, okay? And the mean gets to be more, okay? That is because the mean is affected so much by these big numbers coming from here. Even though they are few, there's only few people earning big dollars, okay, so to speak they affect the mean. So the median might be here, the mean always gets to be some more. The median is the better measure of the central tendency of this distribution here. Okay? It follows more closely near, nearer to the peak, whereas the mean gets kind of thrown off by all these big numbers from here, because you're adding the numbers all together. You're adding everybody's incomes together, dividing by the number of all values or number of people, and so mean gets affected if there are even some very big numbers here to be added to the whole sum. Okay, we're all done and I hope this was helpful.